Hey everyone, it's Mo Jacks back in the DJ City UK lab. Today we're talking turntables. I know that's a favourite topic for DJ City subscribers because, you know, we all love a bit of vinyl. At the end of the day, it's the root of our craft. Even if I'm using CDJs in the club or controllers or whatever else, I still got love for the, just the process of picking up a needle, putting it on some vinyl and playing a bit of vinyl. It's just, there's nothing else on earth like it. So, you know, we st we'll always have love for turntables here. Um, what we've got is three reloop turntables we're looking at. We've got the RP8000, the straight arm version, which is the new version. We've got the 7000 as well, which is basically the 8000 without all the MIDI stuff. And later on, I'll be taking a quick look at the RP2000 as well, which is a budget turntable. Now, these are super OEM turntables. They're based on the hand pin design with the Technic style brushless motor, you know, properly rock solid. It's a proven design now. It's been in the market for over 10 years. Um, with Stanton and Audio Technica, and then Reloop came along, and Pioneer, the PLX-1000s, have got a very similar design as well, and it is a proven design. Now, one that was interesting to me, I did see a video from this guy, The Bright Pixel, on YouTube, where he was reviewing the Pioneer PLX-1000, which is very similar in construction to the RP-8000 and 7000. It's got the resin base rather than the rubber base that you find on the Technics 1200, but it's got the same motor and that kind of thing, and what he did was basically put a needle on the record, just a regular bit of vinyl, turn up the gain on the mixer with the PA speaker attached, and it started to feed back quite readily. Now, I've never experienced feedback issues with any of the Super OEMs in a club environment. You know, I take these all out to gigs and try them out, and I've used the Reloops at gigs, no feedback issues. Pioneer, same thing. I've got a Stanton uh, 150, again, same, same thing there. No issues with feedback with these Super OEMs. So I was really interested to kind of recreate that test, and I did. Um, basically hooked up as many speakers as I could find in the studio, um, hooked them all up to this Rain 64, ran the same kind of test with the vinyl on there, just static, and yeah, there is feedback if you really crank the gains with the reloops, but there is also feedback if you really crank the gains with the Technics 1200 as well. To be fair, it is slightly you have to go a little bit higher with the gains to get that feedback, that real crazy feedback noise with a Technics 1200, a little bit, maybe like you know two or three notches more on the gain to really get that feedback going. But that is still present in a 1200, and certainly it's easy to recreate with this Rain 64, loads of headroom on here, you can easily get a 1200 to feedback in the same way. So as I say, I'm not saying anything scientific there, all I did was recreate the same test I'm not going to argue with his results with that Pioneer because I don't have a Pioneer here to test. But with the Reloops, yeah, they don't feed back at a point much below what my 1200 did. And so therefore, I'm quite confident that these are good enough in terms of feedback performance for use in a club. And as I say, I've had no issues with it. I don't know any friends or colleagues who've had issues with them as well. And I know a few people now with the 8000. So make of that what you will. But I'm quite happy with the feedback performance of these decks. Now... The 8000, yeah, straight arm version, it's an endless debate about straight arms. I've read so much about straight arms versus S arms over the years. My conclusion is, I don't know what the answer is. I think I'm leaning towards a straight arm on a Technic style design will wear out your vinyl a little bit quicker than with an S-shaped arm. So if, I'm thinking if you're going to be playing lots of rare, valuable old 45s or LPs and stuff like that, then probably stick with the S arm and they still do the S arm version of the 8000 that's still an option for you but where obviously the straight arm comes into play is when you are doing turntablism and cutting and stuff the tracking on it is unbelievable it really really is good definitely up there with the Vestax of old you know that PDX kind of design I mean this is in absolute mode I haven't really calibrated this tone arm at all and I've got no issues at all with it jumping. I'm being really heavy handed. So yeah, from that point of view, sweet as. You know, if you are a turntablist and the main thing for you is the performance under hardcore scratching situations, then the straight arm is definitely gonna be worth looking at. With the 8000, they have made a few changes with the latest version of Serato DJ. Um, basically, you've now got a BPM display coming from Serato DJ onto the turntable. So we've actually got effectively a little screen on the turntable telling you stuff that's going on in the software. I really like that idea. So as you can see, as I go up through the BPM, 
up to 120. And that's really, really nice to see. You know, it's, it's more useful than a pitch percentage, really. Um, you have got plus or minus 8%, 16%, or plus or minus 50% as well with your quartz lock button. And you can adjust the brake. And that is a dead bonus as well on the 8000 straight arm version. They've got just the brake adjustment, not the startup. I don't really care about having adjustable startup. You can just adjust the brake on this now, which for me is a much better option. You've got the adjustable torque between the super high, you know, super OEM kind of torque and the Technics kind of torque. If you do lots of mixing with your fingers on the side of the platter, you might want the lower torque setting. High adjustable tone arm, nice solid super OEM tone arm. Lovely. And of course, you've got the MIDI controls which all work as well as they ever did with the original 8000. So you don't need dices on here. You've got up to your eight key points that you can assign there. You've got loop mode. So we're going to loop, various lengths. And it does as well work with the uh, beat jump feature in Serato DJ now. So now the four pads on the end, I can go between the beat jump lengths and then jump back and forth with the two on the outside. So this thing is keeping up with the software and that's good to see from a Sorai point of view. You've got SP6 mode as well. You've got the slicer mode and you do loop slicer. And they do keep updating it to work with Serato DJ and that's really good to see. It's keeping, you know, as I say, up to date with the current software. You can link two of the RP8000s together with an extra USB cable, just link the two. They do come with right angle connectors now. The original 8000, when I first got it, um, that was the first batch and they didn't have right angle connectors. So as you can see with these, I've got them lined up right next to each other. You can have them right next to the mixer with no extra gap for your cable sticking out or anything like that. All really, really nice. So fundamentally, yeah, the 8000, this um, straight arm version is great for scratching, fantastic. I'd probably still lean towards the S arm if you're playing a lot of real vinyl as well. But really, if you're playing a lot of real vinyl as well, you know, if, if that's your main thing, do you really want all these MIDI controls on there as well? Well, that's why we got the 7000. This is the one for your real vinyl decks, really. You can obviously use it with Serato DJ. I'm using it with Serato DJ here. And it works just fine. You've got the same digital pitch control, nice, accurate feel. In many respects, these digital pitches feel a lot more like a CDJ pitch than they do a Technics pitch. But there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it feels like the Mark 5G pitch as well. That was always digital kind of feeling. It's a different feel. The way it kind of picks up and slows down is different, but not really a massive thing. Start and break adjustment is on the one knob on here still, so you have only got the option to do both at the same time, but that's no massive deal. Same pitch ranges, same adjustment for the torque. This is fundamentally really the same turntable, but without the MIDI stuff for 100 bucks less. So really you've just got to look at what's your priority. If you're playing lots of real vinyl, the 7000 will do. Save you 100 bucks, you know, just get a pair of those. If you are using a mixture of Serato and real vinyl or just Serato or Tractor, you want all that MIDI stuff, the 8000s will be the way to go. So yeah, just to wrap up these two basically, these are up there with the cream of the crop when it comes to the Super OEM turntables and indeed all DJ turntables which are available to buy new today. I like the small improvements they've been making on the RP8000. The straight arm, if you're a hardcore turntablist, is definitely a bonus. I'm not, so I'd probably lean just towards the S-shaped arm still but yeah the midi stuff just keeps getting better with serato dj no problems there it's really nice um the main competition really in the market right now for these is the plx 1000 from pioneer which is a good turntable but it's 800 bucks or they're 800 bucks each and they are very very kind of simple in what they do they've only got a phono output for example now these have both got line level output as well as a phono output it's not perfect i've got to say because the motor um, as well as powering off the motor, this does power to the whole deck. So the preamp turns off and you lose audio, just cuts out when you try and do a wind down with it. So you'll need to use the brake adjustment up there. Um, and that means that actually I just prefer to run these in phono level mode, which is, you know, in, in which case they perform just like a Technics 1200 would. Um, interestingly, from the original firmware on the old 8000s, it used to kind of speed up when you turned off the power in, in phono mode. It would kind of speed up and then slow down. That doesn't seem to be the case with the 8000, um, the straight arm now. So I'm assuming they fixed that in the firmware. That's the kind of stuff I like to see from manufacturers. 
get stuff updated, keep working on it, keep changing it, and reloop in their credit absolutely do seem to do that. So yeah, in short, the 8000, straight arm for turntablists, S arm for normal people who want the MIDI controls on the deck. The 7000, nice, solid, simple turntable, can be used with DVS, but ideal for real vinyl use and that kind of thing as well. Definitely, these are solid decks and I've got no hesitation in recommending them. So to wrap this up, we're gonna take a quick look as well at the Reloop RP2000 USB. Now this is a budget turntable. Street price is about $300. So we're talking half the price of even the RP7000, you know. Um, historically, my advice has always been, if you are serious about DJing with turntables, skip the budget turntable step, go straight for a used pair of Technics and go from there. But the problem is now that market has changed. You can't pick up a used, you know, a used single Technics turntable, 1200, for much less than kind of $500, certainly not. I check you know, eBay regularly here in the UK for the Technics prices, and by and large now they start at £350, so that's about $500 for a single one, unless it's really battered or you get really lucky. Um, so yeah, that market has changed, and now, so is it worth looking at a $300 turntable? Well, it's still a budget turntable. You know, it's pretty lightweight, it's lots of resonance in the body and so on. Uh, the motor is a direct drive motor. It's not like the belt drive junk that I started out with back in the day. It's got a you know, decent pitch performance, which is good. It locks onto a tempo pretty well and doesn't jump up and down too much as opposed to those old belt drives I had. It's not great for scratching. You know, the platter has some up and down movement in the you know, side to side. You'll need some really good slip mats to overcome the kind of fairly low torque with it. But that's not, you know, it's a budget turntable. It's made to a budget. I'm not complaining about it for the price. I think it's equivalent to pretty much anything else at the price. You haven't got bells and whistles. You don't have um, the adjustable height on the tone arm for using different cartridges. You've got a fixed phono uh, cable on the back there. The RCA connector is fixed. You can't take that out. Um, it is phono line switchable. And interestingly, or crucially rather, you've got the USB connection on there. So you can actually hook this straight into your computer and record your vinyl. So I think there are a couple of markets where this will work very well, and that is for the sort of home listener who wants a DJ style turntable, who's got a little vinyl collection going on and wants to be able to listen to that and plug it into any old stereo, you know, with the line input, and to be able to record to your computer as well, get your vinyl collection into your computer. That's great from that point of view. And I think if you're a controller DJ, you're not really intending to DJ with vinyl, but you just wanna play some vinyl again. You like the joy of collecting vinyl. You wanna record it, same thing really, and have this alongside your controller, then cool. But I think the idea of buying a pair of these and learning to mix on them isn't really the way to go. And certainly they're not appropriate for a professional kind of use. You know, you can't take these out to a club. They're gonna to vibrate too much. Um, it's not, and just that performance isn't quite there. But again, I'm not having a go at these things. They are a $300 deck. Um, anything else you're gonna pay twice the price. So it's just one of those where I don't think this is quite for you guys and girls out there, but there is definitely a market for it. There you are, thank you very much for watching today. Make sure you subscribe for all our future tips, tricks, and product reviews. I'll see you soon.